invasive species can be very, very difficult and also really frustrating. That's certainly the case at this Metro Detroit retention pond where the Louisiana red swamp crawfish has been multiplying and multiplying rapidly. Drastic measures are being taken, but are they working? Let's bring Paula Tutman in. She was the first to tell you about this wildlife challenge. Paula, how's the battle going? Well, Karen, let me say this. These DNR guys and gals are rock stars. They really are our first defense against these invasive species that can really wreck our environment as well as our economy. So let me show you what's going on right here. You see these fathead minnows, and, and some of them are actually jumping out of the water. They're trying to get away from this chemical that's being pumped in. If these were the Louisiana red swamp crayfish, that would be great. Crayfish, crawfish, crawdads, etouffee, whatever you want to call them. In Michigan, the red swamp crayfish is a nuisance, invasive species, and today the DNR is doing battle. It's really important to respond early and uh, really go at an invasive species before their population has the ability to really uh, expand and proliferate. Mostly contained to one retaining pond in the area, CO2 is being pumped into the water. What we're trying to do here is elevate the carbon dioxide level in this pond to the point where the crayfish want to leave the pond, making them easier to capture. Also on site, a team from the U.S. Geological Survey in Wisconsin, lending expertise but also studying the response. Here's the problem. Mother Nature dumped more wind and rain in the area, diluting and dispersing the carbon dioxide. We're not seeing that flight response as much as we had anticipated. As scientists check the perimeter, the news is not good. Other than those caught in the free-floating traps, the hope to painstakingly catch the crawdads as they flee the burrows, but instead they appear to be digging in deeper. So there's one right here that's currently burrowing, and you can kind of see the the mud moving a little bit oh, yeah. and he's actually right behind it so let's see if we can get him out of there him or her it looks like a big male and typically when you go in after them they take off on you and drives them further into the burrows creating real damage to the surrounding shoreline or migrate and that's when they become a state problem and not just a local one it's important that they don't get introduced into public waterways, so they don't uh, displace and outcompete some of those native species. Other stuff in the pond became stressed, incapacitated, or even died, setting the buffet for birds of all kinds, which came out for lunch. Yeah, but those crayfish stayed put. So what happens next? These guys have to go back to the drawing board if this doesn't work. They're actually going to be out all night long. So we're talking about an overnight operation. They say that the crayfish will be more active in the evening. They hope it works. If not, they've got to figure this out before the weather changes, Karen. Man, they have a battle on their hands. Thanks to the DNR for all their hard work. And thank you, Paula.